There's a bunch of crazy stories written by the Brothers Grimm. And now you're gonna learn all about them, listening to the Brothers Grimm. Students and scholars, friends and relations, welcome to the Brothers Dim Podcast. We're a fella named Phil and a mensch named Mike. Chit chat about the stories written down by the Brothers Grimm, who they themselves were two fellas. Uh, but these fellas lived in Germany, wrote all this silly shit down in the early 19th century. My name is, as hinted at earlier, is Phil. And my name is Mike. And today we're going to be discussing story number 40, The Robber Bridegroom. Mike, how are you? Uh, aside from explicitly giving my kids instructions to get themselves to bed and then <laughs> them proceeding to sit on their phones and play Minecraft for an hour and a half and not get ready for bed. Oh, other than that, I'm pretty good. See, that's the neat thing about, well, so my kid is, uh, is 16 months old thereabouts and we just put him in bed at yeah. seven o'clock. We give him a bath and then we put him in bed. At, we put him into bed at seven o'clock and then he, he just falls asleep two minutes later. Not yet to the stage where he can't willfully or where he can willfully ignore your orders. No, I guess not. He just, and in an order, does he want to, he's very tired by then. <laughs> and that's, just, say, that's, that's part of the problem. My children are never tired. And yeah, I, I expect that to be uh, a case for me in, in approximately 10 years, I guess, or, or so. Could well be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm doing well too. I, I don't want to step on your job, which is delivering the plot for this story. <laughs> uh, but I did want to note that this story this is a very different story than the what we're used to, I think. Yes. In that it's just a, a short horror story <laughs> a little bit <laughs> with no magic. Just some just some dark shit going down in Germany that you hear about in the pub, I think. Yeah, you know what? You're, I didn't even think of that, but there's no there's no magic involved. There's no magic. There's no fairies. There's no kings or queens. I don't think no, so. no, 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 there's no wolves either. I think you know, like <laughs> yeah, even the ones with wolves, like there's still some magic in in the idea of a talking animal. I guess right. Yeah, not here though. No. So I apologize if I've spoiled things for our listeners. Mike, since we're talking about it anyways, would you please and thank you walk us through the plot of Grim Story Number Forty: The Robber Bridegroom. It would be my dark pleasure. <laughs> so there's a Miller, as there often is. <laughs> uh, this, this Miller has a beautiful daughter. He wants to make sure as she grows up, he wants to make sure she's provided for. Uh, so he decides he's going to offer her up to the right suitor. Smart. Pretty much the first one who comes by seems rich <laughs> and doesn't seem to have any faults. So he promises her off. Uh, she, she, however, is not a fan. She finds this guy weird at best. In fact, she, quote, feels a secret horror whenever she sees or thinks of him. Mm. One day he complains to her that she never comes to, she's never come to visit him. She's never seen his house. <laughs> she's like, well, you've never told me where you live. <laughs> that's, a, that's a red flag, ladies. Yeah. Uh, and of course, he lives out in the middle of the dark forest. Red flag um, number two. Yeah, she she tries to protest. And says, oh, I know I can't find my way. He says, oh, I'll, I'll leave a trail of ash for you. Actually, I already have guests invited and everything. So follow the trail of ash and you shall find my house soon to be our house. She's uneasy at best at this. Uh, she sets out. She fills her pockets with lentils and peas so that she can leave her own trail mm -hmm. while following the trail of ash. Finally arrives in the middle of the dark forest. And lo and behold, there is a single house. It's dark. It's dismal. Does not like it. Uh, she enters and there's no one there. A caged bird suddenly cries out, turn back, turn back, young maiden dear. Tis a murderer's <laughs> house. You enter here. And then it repeats it. And so you would think, oh, I'm going to turn right around and fuck off home. Nope. She goes further into the house. Takes that as a sign. Time for some sleuthing. Yeah. Uh, she continues to find no one uh, and then decides to head to the basement because why not? Yeah. You know. She finally does find someone. It's a frail old woman whose head shakes uncontrollably, which in, in and of itself is kind of right out of a horror movie. Mm -hmm. She asks after her fiance and the old woman tells her she's in a murderer's house. Um, and when they get back, uh, they're going to cut her to pieces, cook her and eat her. Uh, she will be wed to death. 
The old woman decides to help her, though, so she hides her behind a big barrel just in time as the murderers all arrive home drunk with a young maiden that they have kidnapped screaming her head off. Th- this is where things turn even darker than your standard grim. The, uh, the murderers arrive home uh, just as the girl has gone off and hidden behind a big barrel. They give her three glasses of wine and her heart bursts and she dies. They proceed to tear her clothes off, lay her on the table, cut her up, and salt the pieces. Uh, one of the robbers wants a ring from one of the girl's fingers. He can't get it off, though, so he hacks the finger off with an axe. Uh, but then the finger springs up in the air over the barrel and lands in our heroine's bosom. He goes looking, uh, but before he can get to behind the barrel, the old woman steps out and redirects him back to eating. I don't think they're the, the smartest folks. In fact, she says the finger's not going to run away, so why don't you just wait till morning? So they go back to eating. The old woman doses them with a sleeping potion while they're eating. And soon they've fallen asleep. The girl and the old woman sneak out. The wind has blown away the ash trail, funnily enough, but her trail of peas and lentils remains, so they head home to the mill and tell dear old dad all about it. Apparently they do nothing because soon the wedding day comes, uh, and everyone's sitting around the table making merry and telling stories. Uh, They keep pressing the bride to tell a story, so she finally relents and tells the story of the murderer's house, uh, framing it as a dream. And every few sentences, pausing to say, my darling, it was only a dream. Uh, She reaches the end with the finger and then takes the severed finger out of her cleavage and shows it to the group. Her husband-to-be, who by this point has turned to as pale as ashes as the story has been told, leaps up, tries to run away, but is stopped by the wedding guests who deliver him over to justice, and he is executed with his cohorts. The end. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, it's a dark little... I guess realistic horror, you know, without yeah. not, not Satan or whatever. Just like so, just they they dismember and rape a woman. I guess they don't right. rape her, but <laughs> they get her they get her drunk. I, I'm curious. I was really curious what they said. They fed her white wine, red wine, and yellow wine. Yeah, if the yellow was wine weird. was like I didn't exactly know what that was. So, anyways, regardless, we we can get into to stuff in a little bit. I have one question. I would like to say right off the bat. Oh, do please. Who taught the bird? <laughs> and why hasn't he gotten rid of the bird? Just how to say that poem. Why hasn't he gotten rid of the bird? <laughs> like, I can see question. a bird, a bird saying like, help, help. You know, they're, they're tearing me. I, I don't know. Whatever, whatever the people are screaming, but like <laughs> someone had to teach it that phrase. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the old woman's been slowly doing it. She seems to have been undermining them. No, you bring up a good point. Yeah. It had but, to have been but only one. until now has decided to help one of them. <laughs> I think only until now, maybe she thought this is her, this is her chance. The maybe. rest of them are coming back in, oh, yeah. in, bo- in you know, bound up and <laughs> yeah, perhaps this is the first one has ever gotten there willingly. Yeah. And, and gotten there, there home. might have a way home. Uh, yeah. Like uh, they follow the trail of uh, lentils, which have already grown overnight, I guess. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think you can assume the old woman goes on to live with, with her and dad. Yeah. Although it's not mentioned. I'd put her up. Oh, yeah. If, totally. if, if she had saved me from like <laughs> dismemberment and rape and murder, they do nothing to save that girl, by the way. Oh, yeah. The girl, there's, the girl with the wine. It's a quick decision that there's nothing they can do. <laughs> <laughs> like, so she was definitely, she was, she was bound and brought back to be, to be, to be all sorts of fiddled with and uh just the horrors upon her and and they just they just hide which i guess i mean if you're you know what are you gonna do i know they they get their revenge on the 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 one guy well it's 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 implicated that the the whole gang is executed i don't know if he gives them up or what i know good good if they are yeah i'm starting to feel by the way 40 stories in that maybe the brothers Grimm have decided uh that picking on woodcutters was getting old (laughs) And we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of different types of jobs. Miller, Miller has been popping up lately. Yeah. Fair number of Millers. For anyone not in the know, uh, a Miller is, is someone who works in a grain mill, grinds grain down into flour for breads and such. It's a noble profession. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Like the, the woodcutter is always just poor. The Miller, like it's, this guy's not poor really. I mean, he, but he's, he, they kind of cast him as a, you know, he's trying to do right. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm wondering if that's sort of the Miller ascetic that they're they're going for right sort of the the working poor <laughs> hard-working earnest but still poor but still poor but not 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 so bad as a woodcutter right woodcutters just keep having children they can't afford and they can't sell them off in the woods there's also the to... there's this idea that the woodcutter just lives in the middle of the woods it's not clear what they're cutting wood for or if they're selling it to anyone I assume they maybe have that's to... the problem 
Yeah, they're just giving it away. <laughs> they're good at cutting wood, but they suck at selling it. And that makes sense anyways. The, the, the Germany is full of forests. It's what you only really need one tree. You need to fell one tree. That'll like and that that'll that'll keep you through the winter, I would think. So yeah. There's not a lot you need the woodcutter for that. I don't know, but holy hell did they murder the hell out of that girl. <laughs> after yeah, I just, we we've had implications of violence and malfeasance and all sorts of things but this is really the first time where it's just like a brutal in-person murder happens on screen and it happens to an innocent presumably like right. the, yeah we don't like, even know a name or anything yeah we, we we've seen brutal murders of people that were in the wrong that and <laughs> tried to right, fuck yeah. with the king or whatever you know we're gonna put you in a barrel <laughs> gonna, <laughs> oh i missed the barrel fill, executions we're gonna fill the barrel with with nails and acid and snakes and we'll see which one gets you first. And, and we'll then roll put it down you in the river. <laughs> yeah, roll it down a river and over a waterfall. And uh, eventually, uh, no one will see you again. But but yeah, no, uh, straight up, it's not even not even the the, the girl like who knew. <laughs> oh, this guy seems bad. No, this is just some girl that like they they just kidnapped and killed. Yep. Not not horror. like not the not the stepsister or anything. No, yep. straight horror. It's uh, it was which I was interesting. Oh, I don't even know. I didn't write down a moral. I wonder if I can think of one really. I feel like but do you my, have a moral? the moral yeah. I have is trust okay. your gut. She, I mean, she, she clearly is, you know, she, she has reservations about this thing from the, the first moment. The guy's creepy. He's never told her where he lives. He lives in the middle of the dark forest. She gets there. It is creepy as hell. Uh, there's nobody in the house. A bird tells her to leave because it's a murderer's house. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oops, he's well, a murderer. Start- yeah, people start coming. Over and say, no, that's no, that's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Just yeah, trust your gut. D- you know, <laughs> like if you don't, if if something's if something don't feel right, don't go home with that guy. Yeah. Although there's also the question: Did she have the agency to trust her gut here, or is she just be- betrothed to this guy no matter what? I mean, she was betrothed, but the father I think was trying to do right. I think she. I don't know if she maybe I. They don't really say whether or not she really protested. Just that she didn't like him. Yeah, it could have all been in in her inner monologue uh, yeah but i have a few notes i don't know if you have uh what notes you have yeah a couple what do you got okay um so one this work has changed over time so we're reading a later version of it and in the the original the first edition it was much more uh fairy tale so the the, the title character the robber bridegroom was a prince mm-hmm. the bride was a princess and her father was a king 35 years later or something they they switched it up the brothers Grimm. For like a way later edition, the, the that, they were like, let's make, let's bring these guys back. To, and maybe they were, they were tired of like just having kings and queens and yeah. princesses and stuff. In the you earlier know, like, edition, was the the prince uh, still a murderer? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was like a like a sadistic uh, prince that tricked a king into offering up the hand of his daughter, and then and then he tortures you and kills you. Yeah. Similarly, um, this is often tied to the story of Bluebeard. Not the pirate Bluebeard, apparently. I wasn't fully familiar with this, but it's another sort of serial guy marries a woman, murders her, marries another woman, murders her, etc. In fact, apparently Bluebearding is a verb to refer to serially marrying women <laughs> and murdering them. Okay. I've never heard of that. What, what yeah. was the, what's the Bluebeard? Uh, like, where does that come from? I'm not sure. I've seen I've seen it sort of related to Middle Eastern or even Far Eastern variations. Okay. But the idea is he, you know, he marries a beautiful young woman. One day he tells her he's going to go away on business. Here's the keys to the house. Uh, It'll open every door, but there's a, there's a chamber in the basement. Don't open that. Don't ever open that. Sound (laughs) familiar? That's just like torture chamber. And yeah. So she has like all her, her friends and cousins over for a party that weekend and they're they're raging but she's really curious about that door so she goes and opens it and it is flooded with blood and his first six wives are hung up on hooks or the, the corpses of his first six wives are, wives are hung up on hooks uh she she panics uh, accidentally drops the key grabs it shuts the door and runs back upstairs and can't get the blood off of the key okay. so he comes home and sees that the key is bloody and and realizes what's happened um i think just in the nick of time somebody shows up and kills him Okay. Before he's about to kill her, but yeah. I was like, Google has this as it's a French folktale. Oh, okay. By Charles Perrault. Oh, and written in uh, 
1697. So, so a good hundred and some years before the brothers Grimm. Yeah. And, and yes, you're right. Uh, the wife's brothers arrive and kill him before he can give the final blow. And the yeah. wife inherits his fortune and castle. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then has a nice burial for the six dead wives. <laughs> And then uses the fortune to have her siblings married and then remarries herself. Yeah. Okay. Tidy, and that's tidy Blue- package. Well, that's Bluebeard, I guess. I, yeah. uh, I, I've never heard of that one, but bonus. Interesting to know. Okay. I also Let's got, ver- I got very excited because apparently Eudora Welty, I think in the forties wrote a okay. novel called the, the robber bridegroom based on this, but it is pretty loosely based. The, the robber is actually an outlaw and he's like a, a heart of gold outlaw. Um, okay. He doesn't kill the heroine. He like, I think he kills his rival or something like that. It's it's like a old Western musical. Uh, yeah, it was, it was adapted into a musical too. Oh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, very, uh, very different. There's no brutal murder of, of innocent maidens. <laughs> Especially if we're, you know, like thinking about this now Bluebeard fella, like a very early instance that of straight horror, like non-magical yeah. horror. And so it makes sense that, you know, this is this is before I uh, certainly Bluebeard would be before Frankenstein. It would be before Dracula. It would be before like any of these things, you know, the, yeah. the, the the sort of shit that we have now. I know Neil Gaiman had a story, Smoke and Mirrors, and, and it, which, which kind of follows along the, the, the thing. Actually, no, you know what? In the end of that one, she yeah, she calls him a Bluebeard. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I read Smoke and Mirrors, but I don't remember this specific story in it. it, it the story was Mr. Fox. Yeah. I think I, well, I also, I saw Margaret Atwood n- had a novel called the robber bride. Oh, um, right. I saw that too, but I didn't read about it, but it's, it's, uh, they swap sexes. Oh yeah. So well, it's, uh, you it's know, Margaret Atwood for you. It's, yeah. <laughs> Changing things up. I don't read enough Margaret Atwood. I, by all means, buy a, buy, buy a couple of Margaret Atwood novels. She's, she's yeah. very good. And, and like way more recent than you'd think, I guess I thought, <laughs> I don't know when I first read a handmaid's tale, I hadn't realized how recent it had been written i guess i think wasn't it this it takes place in the 80s but didn't she write it i thought she wrote it in the 60s it's a eight, 1985 huh son of a gun yeah no i, like, I think because i read it for uh when i was briefly at umass amherst um yeah. i took one class called dystopian fiction and that was one of the books that we read nice and I, yeah, I, I hadn't realized it was, so that was, it was 12 years old at that point, which I thought, yeah. something like that. Yeah, that's weird. I, I read it in high school, which must have been 94, but it was already a classic, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, do you have any other notes? One thing that was interesting, I, I saw a number of different translations of this story, and every single one, the finger falls into our heroine's lap. Okay. And only an hour ornate gold leaf page <laughs> leather bound volume does it fall in her bosom <laughs> see well no she's yeah she's clearly wearing uh one of those <laughs> those beer garden dirndl outfits. she's clearly wearing a dirndl <laughs> well it's in it's germany <laughs> it is yeah exactly that you know the you know you got these uh ample ample bosoms to uh mm. to play with you got and sex sells you know right yeah i also i like that she kept the finger <laughs> well, this <is> mine. <laughs> I'll, I'll need this someday I'll, this is proof <laughs> but i'm gonna keep it here because <laughs> if i if i take it out someone will find it they'll, they'll yeah. take it away from me that's all i've got you got anything else i i have kind of a pitch a little bit oh yeah for 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 hollywood i would love this to be a sequel of sorts from one of my pitches from a while ago which was uh story number 22 the riddle where i did a, a bit about it was about florida before it was annexed and it's kind of swamp folk and voodoo and shit. And in that story, two military men were trying to survey the area, come across a bunch of crazy things like a, like a witch and some sacrificial magic at the end. But at one point there was a, a place, um, the two protagonist stops, which was called a, and it was a den of thieves. They tried to poison them, but they got poisoned instead. I think their horse got poisoned or something. Anyways, uh, so this would just be like a, a short story, maybe a, or the backstory, maybe a prequel of the, the, the den of thieves mm. set in the Everglades and part of the, that sort of Everglades witchy magic time that, right. that I'm, I'm creating a, a world there. <laughs> I'll, have, <laughs> I'll have two worlds. I'll have the, the, the Everglades world. And then also, uh, the moons of Jupiter. And I suppose, uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know. We'll see if, uh, 
if the devil and Judas Iscariot ever gets published. But um, well, that's all that I have, though. Do you have, you you don't have anything else? No, no, I'm clean out. Well, shit, dog. In that case, I think that we could probably bring this to a close. This has been story number forty: the robber bridegroom. Sleep tight, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.